Hello, everyone. It is our pleasure to present to you another episode of the Young and Foolish podcast. This week, we're going to talk about something、uh, very relevant, maybe the most relatable topic yet. And yeah, that's right, guys. We're going to talk about social media today. So I want to start off by asking you two: What is kind of the first thought that pops to your head when you kind of think about social media? Well, if we're just doing word association, it's just Instagram, man. You know,、okay. that's the first thing that、okay. comes to、okay. mind, and then other stuff like Facebook. You know, yeah.、Um, but beyond、big、that, platforms. You know, yeah, big platforms. You know, big platforms. Yeah. yeah, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. First thing, big、okay. platforms. Yeah. Now, what about you, Ray? Yeah, just mainly just large social platforms. That's kind of it. Okay. I just yeah. I mean, yeah. that's fair. Yeah,、um, yeah. I guess for me, that's probably、like、the first thing that comes to my mind as well. Just kind of show how big of a reach they have and kind of influence they have.、Um, so I want to get into more of like how you feel about them. How would you describe them? If I were to ask you the first thing、uh, when you think about them, like describing them, what? How would you? How would you describe them? What's the word? Man, the first word that comes to mind. I was thinking about this a little earlier beforehand because I knew this was going to be the topic today. Yeah. But for me, it's kind of like double-edged sword. You know, there's so many good things、okay. that comes with social media,、mm-hmm. but at the same time, so many bad things. You know,、uh, if you're not careful with it. You know. Yeah. I think that the old adage, you know, everything in moderation, especially applies to social media, just because I feel like the way most social media platforms are designed, obviously, they. They, their success is based off, you know, their users using the platforms. Obviously, so they're designed to engage their users as much as possible. But a lot of times, that just leads to platforms that、um, encourage almost unhealthy levels of usage. You know, like people spend hours on Instagram, hours on Snapchat, you know, hours on Facebook,、yeah. um, even YouTube. You know, YouTube. You can. That's definitely a social media platform. Man, yeah, I, for、I'm、sure. For myself,、definitely. I spend so much of my time on YouTube. I feel like YouTube is a little different because. It can be a lot more productive than a lot of the other、um, social media platforms, and that there is some legitimately useful videos in there that can seriously enhance your life, you know, with education and whatnot. So I think YouTube is a little different,、um, but at the same time, I feel like YouTube's even more of a double-edged sword because there's so many other videos on YouTube that just are just a complete waste of time. They're a lot of fun to watch, but they're almost like the new TV for a lot of the new generation. New generation isn't going to be watching cable TV. They're going to be watching、exactly. YouTube. Yeah, absolutely. YouTube, it's it probably even worse than cable TV because、um, if you don't, if you're not careful with it, because if you already wait, if, if people could manage to waste so much of their time just watching cable TV, now、yeah. you have YouTube where you can watch anything you want, literally millions of videos. You, you'll never be able to exhaust the amount of videos. You'll never be able to get through、yeah. all the videos that you could possibly want to watch, right? So there's、yeah. that. You can switch、I'm, it at any possible time. It's available at any time. If you have five minutes, you can watch a YouTube video. If you have an hour, you can sit down and watch a YouTube video. You know, so yeah, that's true. Very true.、Yeah. I think、uh, just the double-edged sword. You know, gotta be careful with it, monitor it, because、uh, if you're not careful with it, it can definitely take a large part of your life that it really sh- doesn't deserve. You know,、mm-hmm. you could spend your、yeah. time doing that. Yeah. Yeah, kind of goes. You can spend that time to, doing、um, other stuff. Yeah, kind of goes back to the the topic we're talking about the other week,、uh, about kind of、uh, what it means to want something, and we're、mm-hmm. talking about how、uh, being intentional, and just kind of thinking about what what it is that you really want, how you really want to spend your time. So I think with this,、um, definitely a good kind of example of that, where you have a lot of options. When you like, especially with YouTube, right? You go on, you can watch anything, and there's like limitless content, and you get to choose. It's not like scheduled by like the network, right? So you really、mm-hmm. have a lot of just freedom、um, into what you want to watch and how long you want to be on the platform for. And they definitely try on on like all these huge platforms. They try to get you to stay on there as much as possible, right?、Makes、and they sense, try to、yeah. get you actually engaging in the content, you know. So yeah, I told、totally, yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. All right, it's not truly free, right? If it's free for you, then maybe、mm-hmm. you are the product, yeah. Right, that's what they say. Exactly.、Uh, so, <laughs> 
Yeah, definitely a very good point about being a double-edged sword about, like, you know, there being so many useful and great content out there for you that could really enhance your life. But at the same time, it's very easy for you to get distracted and kind of derailed from, like, other things you could be doing or want to be doing. And, um, and just kind of people, a lot of the times, are not very careful with it, and they just kind of uh, mindlessly wander onto the sites and just spend way too much time on it without really, you know, without really deciding that's what they want to do, without thinking about other things that they, they could be doing. So, yeah, mm. I absolutely get the point you're making. Um, I don't know, like, I think social media is really dangerous for a lot of reasons. And I, I, I agree with the... Uh, double-edged sword thing um you know the point is you know it can't like you know it can derail um and it can lead to something you know dangerous like procrastination and you know um and i feel like we've all like, experienced that and oh yeah yeah 100 and i think um yeah like and we we feel the effects of it but i also think it's really dangerous for i guess I guess how accessible it is to everyone because not a lot of people, you know, um, you know, everyone has different opinions and through, you know, YouTube or social media, it's so easy to get misinformed or misled towards false, you know, information. And then like that can lead to, to other things where you influence other people on, you know, false facts. And um, it's like, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the flat earthers, you know, thing. And it's also like the anti vax yeah. thing. It's where you give them a yeah. platform, you give them, you know, a voice uh, to, to voice their opinion, which it's theirs, but at the same time, like it's dangerous, you know, like it, it has an effect on other people's lives um, more directly, I'd say. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I feel like social media has become so integrated into our lives already that we forget that it's pretty much brand new you know 10 years ago social media was nowhere near what it was today and even beyond that just um yeah. 25 30 years ago the internet it wasn't a thing it wasn't even when did the internet start like 1990 something so I yeah no i mean idea. it's absolutely insane yeah something it was like 1990s i think it first started up and it didn't okay. become super popular until at least the early 2000s yeah mm, and like so we, we forget that it's still very much kind of the wild west. Like it's it's been a, it seems like it's been around for a while because it's become so popular. Yeah. And um, you know, personally for me, like I've had mobile devices since I was like twelve years old. You know, so I grew up with that. Yeah. And I'm actually yeah, really no. thankful that I didn't get them much earlier than that because, um, oh my goodness, some kids, some parents are basically treating their iPads like babysitters now. Yep. Just give their kids yeah. their iPads yeah. and then they just go crazy like wh what's gonna do what's that gonna do the to the attention span of these kids what's that gonna do uh, especially if it's unmonitored it makes you know? them rely on it you, know? you got yeah. like youtube yeah you know so we forget that it's still very much brand new uh, yeah so we still haven't seen the full effects that it can have so mm -hmm. yeah yeah and and it's also very unassuming that's one of the most dangerous <laughs> things about it it's very unassuming yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, it's very easy to waste hours and hours and hours and not realize that it, you know, it has a detrimental effect on you. Like, it, it's not like a crazy detrimental effect. It's not going to ruin your life for the most part. I'm sure it has for some people, but uh, it's not like drinking or gambling. You know, those are like clearly everybody knows, oh, th those are terrible things to, uh, you know, make a habit out of. Yeah. But social media people, I think, you know, making a habit of it, obviously, is less harmful than what gambling or drinking could ever be. But uh, it's yeah. still a very much a negative thing that can uh it's just you know you got to watch out for it and if you're not conscious of it it's gonna get you you know yeah yeah i mean we've definitely talked like now about the potential it has for kind of wasting uh your time and getting you addicted to that mm -hmm. and kind of stopping your productivity and stopping you from doing the things you really want to be doing that will really enhance your life uh, but I really want to bring back to the point that Raymond was making and I want to add mm -hmm. to it about him saying how, you know, people have a voice on there and these uh, more niche groups could get their uh, message heard, uh, even though a lot of the times it's uh, for the for the, 
I guess the general public overall is probably not a good thing. And the mm. other thing I want to kind of add to that, like, yeah, that is absolutely true. But also for a lot of those people, once you kind of see some of them, it's very easy for you to get into kind of a、um, rabbit hole. It's very easy for you to get into a feedback loop. They try to feed you the stuff you are already consuming,、mm-hmm. right? So, confirmation bias, yeah. Yeah, confirmation bias, right? So you just get deeper and deeper into this. You get fed the same stuff related to that, right? So I think that is also another big danger when it comes to that aspect of social media. And then Lorenzo, you also mentioned something very, very important that I think probably isn't being addressed as much as the other two、uh, kind of issues that we've been talking about, and that is the attention span. I think that is huge,、mm-hmm. especially now.、Um, I've like, I have never been on TikTok. I've seen some of the、yeah, like, no. TikTok videos on YouTube, right? But like, I've never been on that app. I've, I'm not like you know consuming that content. But just that kind of short form video,、like、even the YouTube Shorts is becoming much more popular, right? It's just a lot、mm-hmm. of very short、uh, videos and like just content that doesn't take long to consume at all. And when people are constantly used to it, like they just go one video after the other, and they're all really short, and somehow they still end up being there for hours.、Mm-hmm. You just realize, yeah, you know, like. Absolutely addictive, and、uh, it's really taking away from people's attention spans. I, if you ask them to sit down and actually read a book or something, I think it's you're gonna find a lot of people was, where it's、uh, it can be kind of you know difficult for them to actually you know do that. I was I was exactly about to mention that because I've been trying to make more of a habit of reading lately. Because you know, as as kids, you know, I feel like we grew up in a in a time where we didn't have. Mobile devices until at least until we were trying to get out of elementary school, right? So we didn't have them when we were yeah, super super yeah, young. Yeah, for sure. So and we had like silent reading even out even throughout high school during、uh, English classes we'd have to sit down and like read a book, right? Um and even then, I mean personally for me, I'm gonna be honest. When I'd read those books, I I wouldn't read them outside of school at all. Like it was just I'd read them for like the period of time, and then and that's it. And even then, a lot of that time was spent like blanking out, thinking about other stuff too. So I've been trying to make more of a habit of reading,、yeah. and now that I can pick whatever books I want to read, it's it's fantastic, right? And a lot of that,、uh, a lot、yeah. of the, what's motivated me to do that's been like just you know, I realized I have this massive bookshelf, and how fortunate I am to have that massive bookshelf.、It's、such a shame that I'm、yeah. not reading anything from it. So I started to just pick away at it, but、um, so I, I've been doing okay focusing there, but. I could imagine like younger generations, right? I work as a gymnastics coach, so I can see. I work with a lot of like younger kids too, and like the ones that can focus really well and work hard are few and far between. They're really awesome to coach,、mm-hmm. and don't get me wrong, I love coaching all kids. But、um, I really wonder if it was like that ten years ago or fifteen years ago. Who knows? I wasn't. I wasn't、yeah. coaching then. Obviously, I was a little kid myself. But、uh, yeah, makes you wonder. Yeah,、definitely. and even beyond that too, like, because the, the the reason why I'm thinking about these things is because I notice things in these kids that um I don't think were quite as prevalent in our generation. Like,、uh, for example, one thing for me is ankle mobility. Right, this is kind of a little、mm-hmm. unrelated to social media, but getting onto the topic of the、uh, younger generations and how different they're going to be, I feel like they're much more sedentary now than ever, especially because especially with COVID too, you know. A lot of them, maybe with the、uh, parents, maybe the parents didn't feel comfortable letting them play, letting them let them play on a playground and whatnot. Understandably, so it makes sense. But、uh, a lot of these kids, they can't hit a full proper squat, a full ATG squat, because their ankles are just not mobile enough. And I don't know. I mean, I've always had really good flexibility in that sense,、uh, just ankle mobility. But it just seems like something so basic. And these kids are so young, and they're already deficient in those areas. You know. So it just makes me think. Yeah, that's the body, you know. What about the mind, you know? Because、uh, when they're that young,、yeah. the habits that they make can, can make a serious impact on、uh, how their brain develops and further. You know, I don't think they're anything like crazy. Yeah, definitely. Like, they're not going to be absolutely. But it's just little things, you know, and it, it just makes it more likely that、yeah. 
they'll fall into that social media trap later on when they're adults and whatnot. It'll, it'll be it'll be hard. It'll be that much harder for them to moderate themselves if they never knew yeah. what focusing on like reading a book is. You know, just little things like that. Yeah. I find I mean, they, they get used to it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know. I I feel like especially now a lot of people rely on social media in order to um i guess you know either make a living or um in order to see what's actually happening you know around the world and, and a lot of that can get uh misinterpreted and i feel like a lot of people live their lives on social media as well which is very like dangerous because they're you, you could get judged for many things, you know, or you could be encouraged for things that shouldn't be encouraged. And you you start to reel in more and you take more value in others' opinions rather than your own. So you kind of... Clout culture. Yeah, man. That, yeah. <laughs> that's that's so dangerous, dude. Like, I don't know. I, I think for me, like, living your life on social media or, or having a dependency on it and uh, setting it up, like you know, setting apart from the real world is where it gets really dangerous, especially as a mindset too. Cause you know, where, like wherever you go, you know, in the real world, you might get criticized. You might get, I guess, um, judged in a certain way, but then on social media, there's always supporters. There's always people who are gonna, you know, um, I guess, uh, <laughs> I don't want to, uh, let me, let me figure out the term trying to say you know <laughs> oh suck up to you um but yeah it's it's just it it really it really brings them up for more of a like like you said like more of a like sensitive you know type of uh i guess personality where they can't take those criticisms where they can't really learn how to grow themselves and where you know a lot of people you see a lot of people now they have a lot of similarities you know um rather than i guess differences because uh, of the same things they see every day um like hours and hours yeah. of the same content you know like they want to be the same um they want to fit in and like i guess like humans are social like creatures but like at the same time too much of the same thing can be can be detrimental to someone's mental health as well as yeah. personal growth. Yeah. It's just, yeah, man, like you were mentioning too. Well, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You were mentioning too. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, like we don't know like the super long term effects of social media, you know, like being online 24 seven, you know, hours, like majority of the day. Um, and yeah, like I, we, like I just think it's it's dangerous to rely on it, and it's dangerous to start people on it when they're so young at such a young age. But yeah, what were you saying? Yeah, uh, I mean, just to add on to the the whole part where like you can always find support for whatever online. Uh, you could also argue the opposite effect because there's always the trolls, man. There's always the haters mm -hmm. out there, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was just something I wanted to mention because. But I think I agree with you. You know, there's always you can always find a community to support you and the majority of things. So it's kind of you can go a lot of different ways with that. Whether it be you know you just get really into like just watching a whole bunch of like for example exercise videos, and you never get around to doing exercise. That might be one thing. Or like um, you know you have communities of people. Well, not maybe maybe not communities of people. We have some really unhealthy communities of people um, who, for example, body shame, right? They don't have maybe they may not congregate in one website or whatnot. But there's that there's that there's that subgroup of people who pop up on those types of videos and whatnot. So you have potential for body shaming, you know, um, a lot of people, you know, they follow all these celebrities and stuff. And they're always hanging out with like maybe models or whatnot. And that sets really unrealistic expectations, especially for kids and adolescents and whatnot. Mm -hmm. that, that can be huge right um yep. and you know that can get some kids into like bodybuilding and whatnot and it can become like a healthy thing for them too so it's not as if that's uh, a bad thing entirely but there's definitely those subgroup of people of uh, kids and people who let it get out of hand and then you end up with like body dysphoria issues and whatnot and then that's a whole yeah. different thing yeah yeah and just and, to add yeah. on to that like um 
when you're talking about these celebrities, these uh, influence, influencers with a massive following, you know, we kind of talk about people who are really kind of selling a lifestyle almost, right? You know, with all mm -hmm. the all the all the posts, all the videos, and um, when you really buy into that, and you see other people having success with that, and you don't, I think for a lot of people who are, you know, um, maybe more sensitive sensitive to these things, maybe just naturally, or maybe because you know, being growing growing up in this kind of environment, kind of, I don't know, like you know, you could make arguments for that, but. You know, just some people might be just more sensitive to that and seeing all these people living that and they don't have it. And that could also really just affect people's mental health a lot. Like when you're constantly exposed mm -hmm. to all these lifestyles that all these people are selling to you and you can't achieve it. You know, you're talking about unrealistic goals and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And Raymond, you're mm -hmm. talking about, you know, people kind of all, you know, end up having a lot of the similarities just because all the stuff they get shown, all the same stuff they consume. And it really just kind of ties into that, you know, the lifestyle that a lot of these brands, a lot of these influencers are selling. And I think that's something that if you're not conscious of, that could affect you negatively in many ways. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, no, I agree. A hundred percent. Yeah, like... Uh, and the thing is, a lot of... Oh, go ahead, Raymond. Oh, no. Uh, I was just going to say, like, it could be really discouraging as well. Like, when you don't achieve something that, you know, that you, you're expected to achieve because of all these unnecessary expectations from social media. But, yeah, go ahead. And then beyond that, a lot of it can be not only, not only just seeing all that stuff, not only does that get unrealistic like, expectations in your head, but a lot of these influencers... Don't dis don't fully disclose their situation, right? So, for example, with bodybuilding, you have the fake natties, you know, you people who get like crazy jack, like way beyond anything that's naturally attainable, and then and then they'll they'll like, yo, I'm completely natural, right? No, um, even though there might be like some pretty good evidence against that, like, oh well, you're we working out for this long, and then all of a sudden, last three years, you got super jacked out of nowhere. That's that's pretty sus, right? So yeah. those guys, right? That's really dangerous right off the bat because that's yeah. just unattainable for like ninety nine percent of guys. Even especially because a lot of those guys already have really good genetics anyway. So mm -hmm. for people with average genetics and who won't do steroids, I mean, it's just the the expectations are just unattainable. It's ridiculous. But even beyond yeah, that, some of them like also or, use Photoshop. Yeah, man. It's just to add yeah, on Photoshop to it. too. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Photoshop <laughs> you know? too. Exactly. Like Photoshop, fake natty. Oh my goodness. Great genetics. Yeah. They got they got enough money to like get some the best nutrition, you know. And that's what they do for a living. Yeah. They literally work out for a living at that point, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Like how are you um, gonna match all of those different aspects together? You know, you can't yeah, yeah, you no, just yeah. can't expect and, and that, for right? any, and yeah, and for any listeners, obviously I'm not saying that like I mean, what they're doing is, I suppose, good in a sense. Not, not the unrealistic expectations thing. I think they could. I think they. It would be better if they were honest to their viewers. It would harm their viewers less yeah. if they were just honest to them, right? But you know, it, it should also be said that a lot of this has gotten a lot more people into the gym, and a lot, and it's gotten a lot more people to care about their uh, their fitness and lifestyle in general. So th that is one thing, right? It's not like, again, like I said, it's a double edged sword, you know? There's good and the bad there. But also, moving away from the bodybuilding examples, a lot of rappers, celebrities, and whatnot, you see them driving Lambos and stuff. And then chances are, for the majority of those, unless they're like the elite, elite ones, they probably leased it or rented it, you know? They don't, they didn't buy it with cash straight up. But um, they don't, they don't, nobody ever, no rapper would ever say, yeah, man. Look at a rant. Look at the Lambo I just rented, dude. Let's go, dude. Mm -hmm. Nah, of course. Or uh, you know, maybe fake jewelry. That's a big one too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, I, I say big one, but actually, I can't really think of any big examples myself that I could think of that I know for a fact are fake. But could be. You never know, right? Yeah, exactly. That's mm -hmm. the thing. Like you, you're, you can never be sure if it's real or mm -hmm. if it's fake. You can tell if like they yeah. actually own it or if it's like just rented, at least, or whatnot. And the other thing, like not only like 
Um, like even when people can't afford to uh, like buy those things, a lot of the time they still just you know rent it or something uh, for like financial purposes because like yeah, it's, it's just not smarter. Not, it's not like, yeah, it's probably not like the best decision to make yeah. to actually purchase that, right? So like to just even advertising to be like super rich, like uh, especially kids who aren't financially literate at all. Which I think is a big one too, because it's not like schools do a particularly good job of teaching you how to be financially no, literate. No, not at all. You know, not they'll see all. a price tag on a Lamborghini. They'll see a price tag on a Lamborghini, and they don't realize exactly how much capital you need to have or how much income you need to make to reasonably afford one of those vehicles without seriously financially harming yourself. You know, and do it. Yeah, I. Uh, so I think. Yeah, I think social media is like a giant hive basically of just false ideas or like, you know, that, that starts forming and then, you know, people get on board with it and people kind of fall into it, into these traps, you know, like a lot of entrepreneurs or like a lot of these social, I guess, like influencers, um, they kind of, they kind of abuse the fact that, you know, they have such power in, in like what they're preaching, I guess um onto their i guess you know fan base or you know whatever i just think that because of the abuse you know like they they could sell out basically any false idea or any false information they want in order for themselves to benefit from it and like people will still fall for it because people are so lost in in the idea of it you know they 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 only dream of having a lamborghini they only dream of having like you know these model girls like all of them they, they dream of having all this money, but at the meantime, like, they don't get anything out of it except for, I guess, false hopes. Or, like, you know, it's just, I feel like it's just really non idea It's just, I just think it's it's really dumb how, like, things have turned into this way. You know, it's it's not exactly the healthiest mindset to have. And all these high expectations no, not, yeah. to knock everyone else's down, you know. It's kind of just sad. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not particularly surprised by by it all, though. Yeah. I mean, I feel like no. humans just kind of tend to do that. Anytime a human does something, if it's for like their own personal gain, nine times out of ten, or not nine times out of ten, but there's always going to be those individuals that crank it up to eleven, right? You look at uh, gaming, right? Gaming started off as like a casual thing, but people could take it to esports, right? They elevated to the highest level. Uh, you look at fighting, you know, it's just a very animalistic thing to do, fighting. People elevated to the highest level, UFC. Um, and when I say animalistic, I don't mean I don't like fighting. I love the, watching the UFC. It's awesome and whatnot. Yeah, for um, sure. But people just always, people always trying to, um, when they find something they're good at, they always like to dial it up to 11 and mm-hmm. take it to the maximum. So when these social influencers, you know, if they're going to make a living off of it, they're going to dial it to 11. Well, they're going to... Yeah. Um, do as much as they possibly can. I'm not saying it's healthier at all, obviously, and I completely agree with what you said, Raymond. But I think it's just a natural progression of um, having such a... I mean, social media really is kind of like a Wild West. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. an um, opportunity. Yeah, as long as you people. don't... Yeah. 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 As long as you don't get in the... Uh, as long as you don't get in the way of the bottom line of, like, the, um, the companies running the social media is like as long as you don't piss off Facebook, as long as you don't piss off Instagram, as long as you don't cut into the bottom line with YouTube, they don't care. You can see this with the advertisement stuff that they do, right? Yeah. Where on YouTube, if if you don't have any, if you don't have something that's advertiser friendly, they just you just you know they they'll treat you like a second rate content yeah. creator, you know, kind of. So, yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, people just exploit whatever opportunities they're given. Yeah. And with social media, the potential for exploiting that and taking it up to like that next level, is just so easy that, you know, I honestly, I almost can't even blame them for doing it. I think it's irresponsible yeah. what a lot of people are doing. Um, I do think there are legitimately a lot of really good. Oh yeah. No, for sure. I think the majority of content on social media is good. The problem is the way it's structured. Right. So like, even though individually, some content might not be what we're talking about and it might not be misleading. Like, for example, I can take off the top of my head a bunch of Instagram accounts that I follow that individually. They're, they're not bad at all. Like, I follow a whole bunch of, like, parkour um, uh, pages that just post really cool parkour stuff. 
I follow some pages that just follow like dog stuff and whatnot. How they just do like some dog training. You you know the, the this crazy specific dog training where it's like they'll tell him some command in like German and he'll instantly whatever. I just found that a couple of days ago. That was the coolest <laughs> thing. The, but like individually, yeah. like the vast majority of the content isn't nefarious or inherently bad. Mm-hmm. It's just that the way the the social media itself is laid out, it lends itself to a very kind of addictive cycle. Mm-hmm. So I think we've been talking a lot about influencers and how much harm those people do, especially to like yeah. young kids and just impressionable people in general. Mm-hmm. But I, th- I think it's also worth saying a lot of it comes down to you moderating it yourself, you know, yeah. which is, yeah. you know, that's, that's on the responsibility of the person. I think the biggest um, people that fall here are the big companies, right? Like the Instagram, the Facebook, those people, because the products that they've made, it's just, I don't know, it's too easy to get lost and they, it's, it's more dangerous and they give it credit, uh, even just beyond the potential for abuse from these influencers and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And obviously, um, you're, you're totally right about that and also right about how there are so like much amazing content out there, right? Uh, and, you know, most of them are just, you know, good, you know, or even great or, you know, at least okay. Like really, uh, the dangers mm-hmm. that we're talking about overall, it's a pretty small percentage. But you're more systemic you do, sort of thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you do get exposed to it. You could you could very easily mm-hmm, stum- uh, you know stumble upon it. And uh, yeah, you know, I think we talked about that quite a bit. One thing I want to talk about as well on about that is like a lot of the influencer themselves, you know, buying into this and really dialing it up trying to always you know go above and beyond and take it to a other level a lot a lot of that for them is actually very unhealthy as well and that's a danger for those like content creators so you know a mm-hmm. lot of like consumer like right that's what we talked about so far but on the other side the content creation a lot of those creators mm-hmm. on all these platforms and you know kind of what they um are willing to kind of um jeopardize for the views for the likes for all that you know a lot of times you kind of need to think about that and um you know it's it's not exactly you know like you said some some things you can't even like blame them that much just because like it's so easy to do uh you know mm-hmm. like when it's, that easy it's just for a natural you progression you know yeah yeah, yeah. so for like, yeah, some, like you want to like, you know, something like that the most viewers yeah. yeah or the most likes yeah. or whatever right so it's yeah. just and if you're trying so, to if you if you're doing something and you're not half-assing it for lack of a better term mm-hmm. on social media if you're not half-assing it and you're making good quality content you'll attract a yeah. lot of viewers right yeah. yeah so for a lot of a lot of the times they don't even have to like if they're just doing a if they're just making a really good effort and their stuff is good they'll get big just like based off of that they don't even have to try to be yeah like yeah. a massive big influencer and focus on just the numbers. It can just happen organically like that. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, back to what George was saying about, you know, these like, I guess like these big creators or these influencers getting really unhealthy mm-hmm. in order to, to stay, I guess like relevant because the internet's growing so fast and, you know, like everything just moves along like real quick, you know, all opportunity comes and goes. I, I think, um, that that's a really good point because like i do know like um some influencers or like you know like some youtubers or some content creators i've i've seen go way too far and like you know you you kind of see it all, like being talked about like here and there but it jake paul yeah <laughs> forest man no nah, that's logan paul bro <laughs> Oh, that yeah, was Logan Paul. That was, Come dude, on, man. The same. They basically they were like with the hat, bro. <laughs> man, that was that was so <laughs> oh, bad. The Toy Story hat made it so much worse. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, okay, the Toy Story hat was a little funny, but terrible situation. Yeah, terrible, yeah. It was just, it was just so. I don't know, man. Because and like every other week, you have yeah. the story of uh, some TikToker doing something stupid and accidentally dying or whatever, right? Yeah, like. It's so like, that's the kind of the extreme example, but uh, a lot of them I'm sure jeopardize their their own mental health. You know, 
they've yeah. been just as uh, just as entranced by social media as many of their viewers become. You know, yeah, they become exactly, addicted. Yeah. You know, they find success and they they keep trying to you know go for it. It's like you're already successful. Like if you mm-hmm. want to do more, like you gotta do some dangerous shit. You know, like it, it's just yeah. it, like you said, Lorenzo. It just keeps going higher and higher. You know. People we'll always find a way it, to go like. I mean, it doesn't even 10. just have to be something dangerous, right? That's that's kind of the extreme example. That's when they would like get well, to like, the point where they do something that like clearly jeopardizes the world, thing. You know. Yeah, yeah, no, but even like maybe you know they feel pressured and like for example, a lot of these content producers produce a lot of content, yeah, really, like consistently, right? And like that has yeah, to, that's yeah. a lot of workload. It's not easy yeah. to produce that much content, especially with the quality that they produce it at sometimes. Yeah. Definitely. So the amount of the amount of stress and workload that they put on is crazy. And again, like I mentioned, this also, you can also tie this back to like the big um, the big companies running these social media platforms because, for example, on YouTube, right? If you upload once a week, the chances that your videos will be featured and be uh, shown on the sidebar it goes up immensely, right? So immediately, is that pressure to upload weekly? And if you upload daily, that chance goes up even, you know. It gets even more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just you know they do they advertise it even more for you, obviously. So. Yeah. Yeah. Just even even in the simplest cases, it can still get really out of hand. We don't yeah. have to take it to the extreme examples to see the uh, negative effects. Yeah. Of, uh, social media. I was. Um, yeah. No. Like, in all aspects. Like yeah, like I'm I'm trying to say like it's dangerous relatively to to them like. It doesn't have to be mm-hmm. physical. Like, it's it's mental as well. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, like, a lot yeah, of times... Like, like, wavelength theory. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people, like... I feel like a lot of content creators now, like, get over like overly stressed out about, um, yeah. you know, putting out as much content as possible, like you said. Uh, because people also expect it, you know. If, if you do it for, for even a little bit, you know, people get used to it so quickly. And people start wondering Mm -hmm. like oh like why are you slowing down you know like things like that and it's just i feel like for them like it's it it is a lot of pressure as well um yeah yeah Yeah, i mean with the rate people consume media at right like if you're not uploading content constantly because the time that it takes for people to consume your content is going to be like i mean it's just by the nature of it it's going to be significantly shorter than it takes to produce it so for you to continue and, and yeah. if you don't upload very often at all, they'll forget about you and they'll start watching somebody else who uploads more often, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's always Unless someone else doing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, so if you're not the one, if they're not busy watching you, they're busy watching somebody else, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just it's just a really vicious cycle that content creators can get into. And it's a cycle that's encouraged by yeah. the, the, the viewership habits of the people just the average person who uses social media yeah. and that yeah. again i mean i feel like i'm talking back again to the same thing again but you know again that's encouraged by the social media platforms because that's what they yeah. want that's how they make the most money but, you know yeah. like i mentioned earlier when humans do stuff a lot of times they'll just take it up to 11 so the social media platforms they want every cent out of you that you can get mm-hmm. so yeah it's in their best interest to make these to make these things as addicting as possible right and that yeah. you know kind of has a butterfly effect or kind of snowballs into having these unhealthy uh, relationships with social media that a lot of these content producers have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so like really it's all interconnected, man. It, it, it all is. And it's very dangerous for, you know, both sides of the consumer and the creator. Right. Mm-hmm. And really it feels like it's just a big company that's really benefiting uh, off of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you know, we oh, talked bank. a lot about the negatives and the problems, right? Um, but, mm-hmm. you know, it's popular for other reasons as well, because there's so mm-hmm. many great aspects and there's some good reasons why these big uh, companies, these platforms are making all these money, right? You know, uh, just for one thing, mm-hmm. communication. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just like, you know, you could connect with people from all over the world. Right. You know, you, you, we could talk mm-hmm. to each other online just like this. We could create content through the Internet like this. You know, we could talk with each other despite being like in different cities, in different provinces. Right. So mm-hmm. so there are definitely a lot of incredible things um, 
even just communication wise, but also just in so many other ways as well, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, for example, I mean, personally, for me, one of the biggest ones is educational purposes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I feel like the internet as a whole is a really good tool for communication and um, information and education. But so it's, I don't think it's a, exclusive to social media, but the fact that social media makes it so much more accessible, right? Yeah. It's kind of um, a fantastic thing, I think. You know, there's so much you can learn on YouTube recipes, cooking, science videos. Um, like, for example, you can you can get through a lot of college courses just based off of college videos. Like, for example, the organic chem. Have you guys heard? Have you guys seen the organic chem tutor? I think his name is or something like that on YouTube. He's got yeah, some probably. fantastic yeah. Yeah. STEM videos. It's absolutely top quality. The way they explain it, better than the majority of college um, professors that I've had so far, right? So, and and you get into things. That, this is more talking about like the internet as a whole, but like Khan Academy, for example, that's incredible, making education more accessible like that. Um, I suppose that's only and, and they're obviously the is, on, but yeah, they're obviously on all the social medias just to you know have mm-hmm. it, have their content be even more accessible, right? Mm-hmm. So just exactly. you know these. Uh, these platforms bring all these content into the same place and making it more accessible for everyone, right? So just something like that as kind of a middleman between a consumer who wants all these great products and services and all these, uh, you know, businesses and creators who are offering them. So, you know, there's definitely just so many incredible things that we get out of it as consumers from these uh, platforms. Mm -hmm. And for uh, for pretty much all of these social media platforms, it's at no upfront cost to the uh, consumer, which is, I mean, that's really incredible, right? Because uh, yeah. I feel like education and knowledge like that, the less it's uh, behind a paywall, the better, you know? Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> yeah. I think it just all comes down to the consumer themselves and like mm-hmm. really boils down that's to exactly what they what want. Yeah. Like, we talked about this earlier. But, um, yeah, like, you you are responsible for what you see on the internet, you know. You, like, you could go out of your way to look at some, you know, disturbing videos and, you know, all that jazz. But you could also, I guess, just learn or uh, look up things that you want to learn about, you want to have the knowledge of, you know, like cooking or, you know, like you said, yeah. um, you know, like, just... I guess anything to do with education or academically, you know, um, beneficially. Uh, I just, yeah, like, but at the same time, like, it's just, it, it's like you said, it's a double-edged sword, man. Like, like, like yeah. there's good and the bad and like, it's just hard to balance it out because it's so, you can't really filter it out. I mean, like, it's just such a versatile tool Yeah, man. that, it's hard to regulate. It, it's up. It's really up to you to make sure. Exactly. It's, it's really up to you to make sure yeah. you know how to use that tool properly and productively. Right? Yeah. You can yeah. you can use tools wrong, or you can use tools right. Like for example, one example that comes to mind is like uh, a lot of gun rights activists. I don't really have a stance on gun rights that I care to share here. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially, I mean, we're in Canada, so I mean, yeah, we don't have a gun problem in Canada at all. Right? It's not. It's not even yeah. applicable. It's more so the states that I'm hearing all this from, just across the fence, right? Mm. Um, but a lot of them will say, oh, right. the gun is a tool, right? It's the people, it's the people who abuse them, right? Yeah. I feel like that same sort of idea could be used to, could be used for social media, you know? Um, yeah. I definitely feel like there just needs to be more awareness, um, on the consumer end, right? For yep. that, that, cause a lot of people, like I said earlier, it's very unassuming. Mm-hmm. People don't consider yeah. it, um, well, they don't treat it with the respect that I think it kind of deserves. You know? Yeah. Uh, the, the awareness part is absolutely huge, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I like to think that, you know, uh, for parents and educators, right, he kind of would, um, you would like, you would like for them to kind of establish this in the, well, in the people when they're really young, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if they're if they themselves are not really aware of it and not really actively thinking about it and uh, really deciding 
how much they're using and what they're using on social media. It's very difficult for anyone to expect them or to ask them to do that for the children, right? Mm -hmm. So I I don't Mm -hmm. really blame them because I understand that even like for um, uh, grown-ups, for people who are even older, uh, being addicted to their phones and being addicted to the social uh, networks is actually quite common. And a lot of them themselves are not... They don't. They lack the awareness that we're talking about here. They don't Absolutely. really. I mean, yeah, yeah. One example that comes to mind is my dad. You know, my dad's um, he's not a spring chicken anymore, but uh, he'll be the first to be on his phone playing Candy Crush during dinner. You know, um, mom hates it. My mom hates it. You know, my mom's never on her phone. Almost never on her phone during dinner. Yeah. So, so he usually eat most of his food, and then and then after a little bit, he'll pop up in the Facebook, and then yeah. <laughs> Um, but I, I, I think he's chilling. He doesn't use social media. Now nah, he could probably tone it down a little bit. Now let's be honest here. Let's be honest. Here. But uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. The awareness is huge. Information is power, and uh, social media really came out of nowhere and just took the world by storm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, yeah. think of where it was even just in like 2012, 2010, 2009, even. You know, yeah. YouTube was like YouTube was like a in, basically an indie website back in two thousand eight or two thousand nine. I remember trying to use. I remember like the first YouTube video I watched was like Lady Gaga's telephone music video. Man, that was ages ago. Yeah. Man, that, that was like just when it started to become popular. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that's exactly, when like yeah. everyone's like, okay. Why is this site? We should always check it yeah. out. Like before that, yeah. it was actually like kind of niche, right? Very niche. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think. I, when did it even start? It hadn't been around for like oh five or six. I think I think that's yeah, when that first right, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Man, I think we talked about if, if things huh? had gone differently, we'd be we'd be talking about Vimeo instead or something. Oh, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you could, you can make those. Things. What happened to Vine? No, huh? Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, Raymond! You know, dude, you know, what I just remembered. Dude, this is like a suppressed memory. It just came back. You know, it was actually so bad for like social media and whatnot, and like and stuff. Like we're thinking about TikTok and mine right now, dude. I funny back in oh, grade eight. Dude. My oh God, my God, that was, my dude, God. we were exposed How to a lot hours? of things and like. Bro, we oh spent my god, oh yeah, dude, I've got it, man. Like, whatever we dude, could, we yeah, could, oh, yo, my check goodness. this out, bro, check this out. Like, dude, that was insane how much siphon you used back in the day, man. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I've never used that. <laughs> That's good, yeah. It's, yeah. But uh, I mean, at this yeah, point, just, I don't think, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it, but yeah, yeah just the uh, one thing, uh, relating to that, and kind of the last thing that I think we haven't really touched on in this is kind of the way it's changed communication, right? You know, would you see a lot of you know these uh posts, these memes being shared, you see a lot of <laughs> emojis being used, a you know, very short form text, a very you know. Well, you can't, Informal. a lot of times people don't really use like actual, you know, more long form conversation. They don't really use more, you know, proper or formal language. Mm. So it's, it's very interesting. And a lot of like uh, aspect of language can't really be conveyed through just, you know, that kind of, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, discussion and dialogue. I think that's a crazy good point you bring up because that got me thinking to myself, like back when I was in high school and I had to write consistently for assignments and whatnot um obviously in high school when i did an assignment i tried to do it right you know um yeah so i'd I'd have a lot of practice especially for the english class english and like social studies classes those were big ones where you have to do a lot of like rearranging of information in your brain and you have to present it in a formal way right uh in a way that made sense and was like formal or not but uh, ever since, you know, I graduated from high school, I've been taking mostly like STEM courses like chemistry, physics, biology. I took like a writing course here and there. Or not a writing course, sorry, like an English course mm. here and there. Okay. And a philosophy course. Yeah. And during those courses, like near the beginning, because it, usually it'll be at least a few months since I've, I had to sit down and write something like long or whatever. Mm. Or I had to sit down and write like a solid paragraph. Just because you never have to do that anymore. Um and I'll sit down and I'll have like serious writer's block. 
starting out and I'm like, what, yeah. what do I yeah. write? Or like, I have to respond to like an email for work and I, I like prefer to do that formally. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and if it's longer than a couple sentences, I'm like, Oh, uh, it starts getting done with my brain for a little bit. And I'm like, hold on. What's going on here? <laughs> and even then I go back and I read some of the stuff that I wrote back in high school when I thought my writing skills were half decent. Dude, all I can do is cringe. <laughs> all I can do is cringe, man. I was cleaning up my room a couple of weeks ago. I think I think I talked about it during the highlight, but I was cleaning up my room and I found a bunch of my old notebooks and I'm reading this stuff and I'm like, oh my God, dude. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I can write better now because uh, uh, the courses that I've done in um, university, the standards are a lot higher. Mm -hmm. So, but it, the rest, you know, if that rust accumulates, who knows? Maybe it'll just completely corrode away. Yep. Never know. No, he emojis only. <laughs> 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 but yeah, no, like mm -hmm. damn, but I think it's a big one, especially when it comes to essays. You realize when you like, where you're like, oh man, I gotta write this essay. You know, like no matter like how many words, how many pages, like oh, like once you realize, you kind of you kind of sit there to to take it in. You're like, damn how am I going to write this essay? Whereas before, when you constantly practice something or when you constantly, you know, use a certain skill, um, you kind of get through it a lot quicker. You know, you don't kind of stay there. And like you said, like writer's block, you know, you, you, you don't think about it too hard. You just start writing. You know, you do all the processes, you do all the steps. And then, you know, like by the time you know it, you're done. But it takes so long now just to write, you know, an essay or two it's just yeah like it's just crazy man and then you got all these like short forms of words or like sentences like like brb or, like you know like ttyl it's like oh yeah. yeah you get used to like texting and then you get used to bring that texting style kind of speech into talking as well into um you know into school you know into everything else like anything mm -hmm. formal you, you kind of have an informal idea of like what you want to do, mm -hmm. but like you kind of have to like okay. switch from that informal mindset into mm -hmm. the formal one. It's yeah, man, it, it's pretty, it's, it's like looking at it now, like, like from what George said and like from what you said, it, it, it does really matter, man. It does have an impact on yeah. a lot. Yeah. You know, instead of instead of actually laughing, you just say a little mouth. Dude, yeah, I was thinking about that, man. I'm like, damn. Right? It sounds so casual. Like, bro. Yeah, it's it so is, normal. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing because in casual conversation with friends, like, it's whatever. No, no, it's, yeah. it's become yeah. its own thing, right? It's chill, you know. So, yeah, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying, like, it's no, actually no, no, it's such a huge it, effect, yeah. right? But like, it's, it's crazy yeah. how, yeah, it's kind of insane how how it's progressed because i mean think about lamau right uh lmfao with oh. hard rock anthem that's the first i ever heard of that abbreviation right personally when <laughs> I was a little kid. Our, and yeah. then you know you take the f out because you know you know of course you know yeah, yeah don't need to have that f um and i mean it's crazy how it's been adopted by so many people because it's not even just me that says that like i feel like a lot of my friends i can think of a lot of people who i've heard say oh lamau you know, uh, or even just a more classic BRB, you know? Yeah. yeah. If they yeah. say anything more than BRB or L uh, or Lamau, uh, I don't know. I was getting a little, was getting a little <laughs> bit too far, you know? If they start saying TTYL, yeah. IRL, then I don't know. Man. Yeah. You write back. <laughs> IRL? Bruh. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, I, mean, I didn't even mean to say that. I didn't even mean to say right? that. Bro. Right. See, you just, <laughs> it's so natural yeah, now. It's because... Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. Get so used to yeah. that. It's it's almost like an Man, everyday thing. Like that. Real... Yeah, what are you saying? And no, uh, it was it was just a stupid meme I saw a while back. Where it was like, it was like a. I wasn't even a meme. It was a stupid website, man, that had a bunch of, like, text abbreviations listed. Yeah. And oh. they were so stupid. Nobody ever used oh, those. Oh, my God. It was like, um, like, DOS, that over shoulder, right? That you text somebody if you if your dad's, like, over your shoulder. What? Like, what? <laughs> Nobody uses those. <laughs> what are they smoking over there? That, like, what? 
<laughs> they just they have they don't have anything better to write than to come up with these abbreviations. <laughs> and they had a list of like twenty of them, all just as bad as that one. It was insane. <laughs> or like M O S, mom over shoulder, P O S. Oh wait, no, wait, that's a different one. <laughs> Parent over shoulder. We'll say it. <laughs> oh, it's so good but yeah I know it just reminded me that was a funny yeah. funny little thing I remember there that's yeah. so jokes bro yeah yeah, man. yeah. Uh, well I think uh, that's probably a good place to <laughs> yeah. end it off yeah. um, yes, yeah, if, um, if you guys have any highlights of the week Feel dude, free to do bring I it up a, now. Do I have some highlights, my guy, dude? <laughs> you know, you know, this time, that, you know, I've been working out a little bit more, eating healthier, but come on now, dude. We're going to the moon, baby. We're going to the moon. <laughs> no, but um, AMC is pretty exciting. Who knows? Might, you know, no. who knows? Might crash and burn. I might lose uh, all the money I have invested in that, but uh, it's okay because I only ever invest what I'm comfortable losing. So, mm-hmm. yeah, whenever yeah. it goes down, I feel nothing. Whenever it goes up, I feel everything. You know, I feel a little, <laughs> you know, a little, little <laughs> yes, <yesterday. Yeah. laughs> but yeah, no, I need you to listen. I don't know how soon this will be up, but um, do your research on AMC before you invest. That's all I can say, yeah. Don't 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 yeah. listen to yeah. us. You know, maybe take it into consideration. But no, not financial. Yeah, advice. I'm not saying. Not, I'm not saying. We're not no. professionals. I'm clear. Yeah, I'm not saying. Not no, professionals. No, not professionals no. at all. Just, all just I'm saying is look into AMC and see if it's right for you. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Hold it. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> if you decide to, you know. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> consider it. You know, consider yeah. it. Think consider about it. it. Consider it, and I'll see you guys on my yacht in a couple of years. <laughs> this guy, bro. This guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's 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 a big thing. That's a big highlight going on. Um, yeah, for all of us. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you it, man. I went, I went all in with all the spare cash I could throw at it. Yes, sir. Well, because I'm not. What else am I gonna do? The money, man. You know, like. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I'm comfortable losing it. That's all I'll say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fair. Completely. That's completely Low fair. risk, yeah. high reward, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any oh, other highlights? Uh, right? It's it's very oh. volatile. I will say that it's not low risk. Okay, <laughs> you know, it's, it's incredibly it's low volatile. Lower risk. Okay, but I feel like, I feel like it's risk. I prefer I prefer okay. <laughs> the risk I feel the risk is only what you're willing to put into it, right? So you can only risk. As much as you're willing to lose, yeah. If, as long as you do that, the risk is um, the risk is all up to how your risk management is, right? But I think yeah. a better way to say it is highly volatile, right, and unpredictable. Well, you know? yeah, it's unpredictable and highly volatile. Well, no, so, yeah, I think he meant like, low risk, as, as in, in like, uh, losing, acceptable, yeah, as in like like yeah. lo- mm-hmm. when it comes to losing and gaining. Um, I, I yeah, I, but I, some I, somebody might somebody might misinterpret that uh, as being like, oh, it's a sure thing, it's going to happen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's good that we're clarifying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you look at the numbers, I'm, I'm it's I'm all confident. speculation, you know. Like uh, uh, exactly, all speculation. When it comes you know? to the best, looking at the numbers, yeah. Personally, I'm very confident. It's, but uh, if something does go wrong, which it very well might, because yeah. nobody knows. If anybody tells you yeah. that something is going to for sure happen, hey, yeah. Um, I mean, don't trust him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's a couple things like there's for sure going to at least be a short squeeze. I I don't want to get into that now, but. Basically, if anybody tells you that they know what's going to happen, they don't yeah. rely on to you. You can yeah. never guess it. You know, like that's that's the thing. It's uh-huh. it's, it's random. Um, it's unpredictable. But yeah, you know, ed- educate yourself. Well, it's not random either. But I, I mean, yeah, 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 it's unpredictable. Like if, if you guys want to get more educated on it, you know, um, feel free. Have fun with it. If you guys decide I mean, to there's a it. there's no there's no shortage of educational videos on exactly. YouTube like we were talking about. <laughs> yeah, you know. so, yeah, use use it to uh, your advantage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But and, if uh, you are gonna decide to get into it, last thing I'll say, do a lot of research, okay? Because the more research you do, the, the more comfortable you'll yeah. be with your decisions, and the smarter decisions you'll make. So, if you are yeah, that goes for everything, that goes for everything. 
Yeah. Information yes, is power. Yes, sir. No, Absolutely. No. Nope. Nah, that's it for me, though. Yeah, I mean, you know, I feel like that's probably the the biggest highlight in probably all of our lives uh, in this week. Yeah. Uh, other thing, though, the highlight for this podcast is that we have launched our website, youngandfoolishpodcast.com. Mm-hmm. So feel free to check that out. Yeah. Quick disclaimer, man, like that picture of me. <laughs> I got to get around to replacing that because holy moly, dude. Dude, oh my god. Dude. <laughs> oh no, dude. I can't, dude. <laughs> Hey, man. Dude, you could use that as a poster to advertise a haunted house. I swear, man. Oh, my God. It's just terrible. The worst photo of me on the planet. Like, my, my facial expression, too. Like, how was it? Like, you can't even really see it on the camera because it's a lot of it, I'm pretty sure, just comes down to the focal length of the selfie camera in my phone. So, I hope I don't look nearly as, uh, I don't know, not nearly as terrible on on uh, podcast but jesus christ yeah that's all i'll say about the website but other than that fantastic <laughs> website you guys should check it out yeah we, yeah. Uh, we also got yeah. instagram now and uh twitter as well if you guys want to follow it um ynf uh underscore podcast <laughs> this is the worst I feel like this is the worst episode to plug the, the social media on. You know, just, we're just straight. Yeah. Yeah. We're just straight. Because, like, like, yeah, we talked about the positives that social media can have. And then we're and then, like, oh, yeah, dude, these content creators, by the way. No, no, listen. This is a positive. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just gonna shave, um, shamelessly, man. you know, plug it in, you know. <laughs> hey man, we're different, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> high quality content only. Yeah. Yeah. Educational, <laughs> mm. very nice. But uh, no, we we try oh, to get man, you to that's think. <laughs> yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, uh, YNF underscore podcast. <laughs> if you want to follow us, then that's that's how you find us. Yes, sir. <laughs> YNF, like and or an N, letter N. N. Y-N-F. So YNF. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks you. Thank you for clarifying that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, guys, you should probably check out the website to see Lorenzo's picture, I feel like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just hey, man, as, long as long as nobody as long as, be, as long as nobody takes a screen clip, we're good, dude. We're good. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I think I think that's gonna be it for us this week. Well, we'll see you again. You'll listen to us again next week. All right. All right. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Thank you. See you. See you.